Right, so I've really chosen um, projects that stay true to the idea of giving voice to the voiceless, you know, to those who are not heard. I know from decades of work that these are powerful stories and that no one should experience uh, difficulties without being seen. I mean, okay, I'll tell you just uh, uh, really quickly, I, I remember being uh, in a refugee camp on the edge of Darfur as I was covering the war in Darfur, and I turned around away from the sun, it was right behind me, and I saw a group of children, and that happened all the time, and I'm a photographer, so I brought up my camera and started taking pictures as I normally do, but one boy fell to his knees. He was dressed in what, what, felt, what looked like a sheet that was ripped and dirty. And I could set, tell immediately from looking at his face that he was highly traumatized. I mean, he was maybe 10, highly traumatized. The look in his eyes, the look on his face. He fell to his knees as if he saw a vision. Me in my crisp white shirt, you know, the, the non-iron kind of, it was like, you know, I'm sure it was such a contrast for him. And he's like, what am I looking at? So instinctively, because I'm a photographer, I took a photograph, and then I thought, ah, you know, um, let's try to be more sensitive. So I, sh the kids all wanted to look at the pictures. You know, on digital, it's really easy and it's exciting to show them the pictures. But I kept thinking about the boy, and I put my hands on him, and even though I didn't speak the same language, I tried to give him some comfort. Then all the kids ran away, and a man walked up to me, and he said, thank you for taking their picture, because then no one can say they didn't exist that we are all now aware that this is really happening. So, and it makes me think about, you know, uh, many, of the, many of the things that inspired m my line of work has really been from what, uh, what I've learned about history. And one of the most um, compelling stories, uh, one of the most important stories, one of the most transformative stories I've been influenced by was knowing that the media did not cover the Holocaust in real time. And I emerged from that awareness, promising myself not on my watch, which is one of the reasons why I focus on genocide, those kinds of stories, as a persistent um, um, part of what I thought I should be doing in my job. And so I believe that there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in this country who are suffering um, um, in this way, who are unheard, who are alone, and become, are made more alone by their disease. And, and I, I disbelieve in connecting people. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe nothing does, except that you are connected, and that's, that's also important. But that they're not suffering in silence, you see. That is my, that's been what I've tried to do, try to not let people do that as much as I can do it as a reporter, as I've tried to do that my entire career. Yeah.